Today's video is part of the useful DIY challenge that I am co-hosting with Mom Dust Life Handmade. Please check out her channel as well as the playlist link. I will link both of them in my description box below. For my entry in the challenge, I am going to be flipping three thrift store items that I have recently found for use in my home. The first item I'm flipping is this cathedral arch that I found for $5.50. I'm super excited because I've been looking for one of these but couldn't bring myself to pay the retail prices. The first thing I needed to do was to clean and paint it. I can't believe I'm spray painting in March, honestly. It's 63 degrees out, which for the northern parts of the country is absolutely unheard of, but I'm doing it. I didn't have anything to prop it on, so this is an old grill cover. But this is what it looks like after one coat. This is my go-to paint, Rust-Oleum 2X in satin white. Blossom white. Good stuff, good stuff. And once it was dry, I removed the painter's tape that I had used to cover the metal pieces. Now there was a little bleed through in some spots. This is going to be a rustic piece, so I wasn't too worried about it. I could have used a piece of paper bag. I've done that before, like brown paper, and then tape that in place to get better coverage. But honestly, I wasn't too worried about it. And when I did this, I was feeling a little lazy, but that would be a better way to do it, to make sure that you don't have any bleed through. And if you like my DIY videos, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time I upload a video. I love to do thrift flips and Dollar Tree DIYs. And the next thing I did was to get my handy dandy little battery operated sander. This is Black & Decker. You can get it on Amazon. I got mine at my local hardware store for Christmas time, but I know a lot of you have asked me about this. It's a great tool. I highly recommend it for what I'm using it for. And I just used that to remove some paint in areas where, you know, I wanted it to look roughed up. It This made roughing it up very, very easy. Making it look distressed was very easy. I like using this tool because then you can get paint off of like the centers of pieces. It's not only just on the edges, if that makes sense. If you've made, if you've done any rustic finishes on things, you know, it's always easy to get it off the corners, but not as easy to get it off like flat parts of wood and using this sander allows you to do that. So that's all I did. I just roughed it up until I liked the way that it looked. And then I wiped it down. Now I didn't do a top coat because I was using the Rust-Oleum paint. You'll actually see in my one of my next projects, I had a an issue with the Rust-Oleum paint that I've never had before. So maybe if I were going back to do this again, I might put a coat of Mod Podge on top of it. This is gonna be used inside, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but you'll see what I mean in a little while. And then I didn't want to paint the glass uh, little I don't know if it's like a candle holder or vase. I wanted to be able to use it as a candle holder if I so choose at some point in the future. For right now, I really wanted to use it just to hold some florals. So in order that the ugly stems of the faux florals don't show, I just wrapped some burlap around it. You could, you know, use a ribbon that you like if you did something like this or twigs. I've seen florists use like flexible twigs to kind of do the same thing. The burlap ribbon worked really well. This is one that I always pick up from Dollar Tree when I see it. And so I didn't even glue it or anything. I just kind of wrapped it around and around just to create like a barrier. You could also use like sheets of music. I thought that would be really cute, especially if you do like a shabby chic thing. But the nice thing is because I didn't attach it, I can change it out, you know, if I feel inspired. Once I had it all wrapped, I just stuck a sprig of boxwood. This is the boxwood I get on Amazon. I can link it in my description box. I'm not affiliated, but that was it. I love how this looks. I've hung it here near my living room, kind of when you come into my house. I think it looks beautiful. This is a narrow wall. So I've really been looking for one of these to put here because I thought it would be a really nice scale for this wall. For my next thrift flip, I found this basket at Goodwill for 20% off of $5.99. I'm going to be using it on my counter to hold vitamins in the kitchen. And the first thing I did was to clean it with a little bit of alcohol. I wanted to add feet to the bottom of the basket. 
So I got some of the wood beads from my stash and I just put them onto the skewer. And the reason I did that is because this makes it a lot easier to either paint or stain the beads. I'm going to be staining them with some of my antique wax. And basically you just brush the wax on and then you kind of wipe the excess off. And it, for projects like this, it just works better than stain. Stain is really messy. You have to wear gloves. It doesn't dry as quickly. So for something like this, this works just fine. And I seem to have lost some footage, but I used the same wax to stain the bottom of the basket. The basket had a very light color bottom, and I just wanted it to have this deeper tone. So I used the same process to stain the bottom of the basket and just kind of wiped the excess away. I have no idea where that footage went. My apologies. And once I got the beads looking the way I wanted them, I went ahead and I used hot glue and I attached them to the bottom of the basket. I chose hot glue for a few reasons. I knew I was doing wood to basically wood and that would give me a good hold, but then hot glue also allows you to remove things if you change your mind in the future. So if I ever decide I don't want this basket to have feet on it, I could just take them off. But for these purposes, it worked really well. And then I just wanted to make a little sign that says vitamins just to make it look cute. So I grabbed these mini chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. They're currently there. I think they are for garden labels. I think they were in the garden section. So I just took one of them and I ripped off the stake because I wasn't going to be using that. And then I attached a little twine hanger to it and wrote the word vitamins. And then I attached my little tag to the side of the basket. And I think the best part about this is that if I decide to use it in a different way, I can just pull this off. Nothing is really very permanent. And here's what it looks like on my kitchen counter. This system has been in place now for a few weeks. I actually made this a few weeks ago and it's working great. Everyone's remembering to take their vitamins. So <laughs> this was a good solution. This is the next piece I'm going to flip. This was sent to me by a subscriber and a volunteer at a local thrift store. So I had gone into their shop and saw this and I didn't like the price. I thought it was a little high. It was like $5 or something because it's all split. So they wound up actually just sending it to me to flip. So I think this is darling, this little chicken uh, graphic thing here. So I'm going to take this off and leave this alone. I am going to paint this and I have a decal I made. I was going to fill these cracks. But I kind of like the rustic look of the cracked boards. I know that's not for everyone, but um, I'm going to leave it alone. So I'm going to go ahead. I wiped it down already. I'm going to take off the hardware, give it a spray paint, and I'll show it to you once it has its uh, two coats of the same spray paint. That's the plan. So the sander that I used before came with this drill driver, which I wanted to also show you. So they came in a set, great little tools for what I use them for, for crafting. So I just removed the hardware and I'm gonna be honest, I will show you how the Rust-Oleum paint failed me for the first time ever. Maybe I should have sanded it. I don't know, maybe it wasn't quite warm enough by the time I got to this project that I didn't get good adherence, but some of the Rust-Oleum wound up coming off. I will show you that in a later clip. So if you're gonna do something like this, maybe rough it up a little bit first. I've never had to do this. I mean, this Rust-Oleum paint sticks to plastic, so it's never been an issue. I don't know what happened on this day. <laughs> and here's what it looks like with its two coats of Rust-Oleum paint. And I came in with my sander again and just distressed the paint because that's the type of look that I like in my home. Obviously, if you did a project like this, you wouldn't have to do that step. And you can see what I was talking about before. Using this sander allows you to rough up the flat parts of the wood, not just the corners. So I really like that about it. 
and I took some alcohol and wiped down the project just to give it a really clean surface for the adherence of the decal. Now, I don't know if this is what caused the problem with the paint. I guess it's possible. Maybe I should have just used a damp rag, but I had watched on uh, Makers Gonna Learn, I think it's called. It's a channel that they always use alcohol before they apply a decal. Again, I'm new to the whole Cricut thing, so maybe you're not supposed to do that on wood. I don't really know. Again, I don't know why my Rust-Oleum paint failed, but you're gonna see here, I applied my decal and, you know, I was just making sure to get it straight. And I did all the normal steps. You know, I, I burnished it with my little Cricut tool to make sure that it was adhering really well. And then when I pulled off the transfer tape, look, the paint starts lifting. So the paint in between the words and then also under some of the letters started lifting. That has never happened. I mean, Rust-Oleum paint, like has always been really good. So it must be something that I did in my process, whether that was the temperature outside or if I didn't let it cure long enough or the alcohol did something funky. I don't know. <laughs> so any one of those steps might have uh, messed this up, but this has never happened with that paint before. I don't ever sand my projects really. So maybe that was it. I, I don't know. I really can't figure it out. So I wish I could tell you what not to do so that this doesn't happen to you, but I, I don't know why it happened. So anyway, but I wasn't going to toss the whole project because I like this tray and I'm not using it for like, you know, serving or anything. So I, it's just going to be a decorative piece. So I didn't want to toss it. So I took a brush and I filled in the areas of paint that had come off with some of my white chalk paint. It's not a perfect match to the Blossom White, but it's close enough. Like you really can't tell at all. And I did a few coats to make sure that you really couldn't see the wood through. And then I took this product. This was recommended by the same channel, Maker's Gonna Learn. And I had planned to put this over my decal anyway, because they said this is a great product to use over top of a decal. It makes a decal very durable. So actually I used that to reattach the E that had come off. So I just put some Mod Podge down and then I used my tweezers to place it on top of the Mod Podge. And then I covered the whole surface of the tray with a good coat of this dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And again, I've heard very good things about this Mod Podge. I have not used it before, but I've heard it's the most durable one that you can use. And so I figure that this will help in case any of the other paint decides that maybe it wants to come off at any time. <laughs> Hopefully this will keep it on. And again, I'm just using this as a decor item in my kitchen, so it won't be a high use item. I think it turned out cute regardless of the issues that I had with it. And here's what it looked like when it was all dry. I did take my sander, just the little point of it, and I sanded off some of the paint where it had peeled off just to kind of blend it all in. And here it is on the top of my cabinets. I just love it. This was my intended purpose for it. But if I put a little plate on it, I can also put cookies on it, not directly on the Farm Fresh, but you know, on a plate on the tray, or I can use it for napkins and silverware. So it definitely has multitude of uses. And then it's a really cute decorative piece. Some viewers sent in pictures from projects that they've recently completed. Heather sent in this photograph. These furniture pieces were from her daughter's childhood and she couldn't bear to part with them, so she redid them. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. They're in kind of a cottage farmhouse style with the white legs and the dark wood accents. I think they look just beautiful. Melanie got this little table from a friend who had moved into a new home and was getting rid of some of the belongings of the previous occupants. It had an orangey tone to it and she didn't like it. So she spray painted it black and then sanded off some of the finish. Now she has a great little end table where she can display decor. Not every thrift flip has to involve paint. Carrie took this old scale and enamelware piece and she used command strips to attach them together so she can take them apart if she ever feels like it. And now she's got an awesome piece that she can use for useful purposes like holding her fruit or to display a little decorative vignette. Thank you to those of you who sent in pictures. I love when you share your projects with all of us. And that's all that I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed these thrift flips. I hope that you'll check out Mom Das's channel as well as the playlist, which I will link in my description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.